Hello, and welcome to Vacation Station, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazines.com. Well, welcome, everybody. We're your host, Nancy and Lisa, the crazy mother-daughter travel team on the Love Your Park Store and publishers of Big Blend Radio and TV Magazine and Parks and Travel Magazine. And I tell you what, uh, we're not the only ones traveling across the country going to parks. Our friend Debbie Stone, travel writer Debbie Stone, is on the show all the time you hear her. And she's got a great stories in both magazines and our websites. Uh, she's been doing a lot of road tripping this year and also a lot of park traveling. And today she's joining us to talk about her adventures in northwest Nebraska. And her story cool. is up right now. You can see it on nationalparktraveling.com. And she went through, you know, some of the areas that we may not, you know, we always think parks, are Yosemite, Yellowstone. And um, I really appreciate that she's been doing a lot of the smaller areas, too. Um, I know she's mm-hmm. been to some more iconic ones as well. But uh, sometimes going into these smaller parks gives you a really good glimpse of American history. And that's just what she experienced. So welcome back, Fire Monkey. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for having me back, ladies. How are you? We're oh, good. doing good. Doing good. Hey, we're we're in Lubbock, Texas today. We're recording this, right? <laughs> we're not live today, but um, we're recording this from Lubbock, the land of Buddy Holly. And I hear that you may come down here at some point. You know what? It's it's really not that far out of uh, Santa Fe, and uh, yeah, I'd like to like to get down there sometime. I'd like to also see, um, I think it's Palo, Palo Duro Canyon, which is yes. right outside of Lubbock. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll make the trip sometime and uh, in the future. But it's kind of, quote, unquote, in uh, uh, my my general backyard of, of Santa Fe, New Mexico. So, yeah, it's on, it's on the list like uh, many other places. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Cool. I've I have to tell you that there's armadillo sculptures around here. I saw a yellow <laughs> armadillo sculpture in the medium. <laughs> we haven't done as much travel around here as we want, so I, we're hoping you'd, you'd, you do. But, um, yeah, there's Buddy Holly, you know, the museum and center here, and uh, a lot of other great parks as well. Um, but they have armadillos in their, their mediums, uh, street mediums, and so I think that's pretty Cool. I love cool. that. That's yeah, important. that's uh, that's great. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of that kind of thing, you know, that's Nancy and I have a thing about public art, and I think right now in the world of social distancing, it's very important to go to places like that. And uh, you're always capturing murals as well, and all the funky sculptures. But I and that just leads me right to uh, a place that you went to in Northwest Nebraska, Carhenge. What the heck? <laughs> I have to go oh, there. It is like. First of all, it is, it's, from what I understand, it's a fairly well-known, like, really quirky roadside attraction. I was not aware of it until I uh, uh, did a little more research on, on the area that we were passing through in northwest Nebraska, which, to be honest with you, was never on my quote-unquote bucket list, mm. um, but it was on the route that we chose, uh, that we were going to use to get to the Dakotas, and um also, it is one of the states I had never uh, been to. And so, you know, I thought, okay, you know, m- maybe this will be this kind of boring, dull ride through these uh, plains area. But um, I noticed then that there were all sorts of um, national monuments and then this one very quirky roadside attraction. And when I read about it, I was like, okay, I have to to make the detour to go there. And basically it's this – it's hysterical. This this local man, um, he lived in England. I think he was an engineer, but um, he knew about Curhen, I mean, about Stonehenge, which we all know. Um, and he decided he wanted to come back to his um, his roots, his local area in Nebraska, and as a memorial to his father, he built this thing called Carhenge, which is basically um, in the same size and shape of Stonehenge, but using these vintage cars and, you know, spray-painted gray, so they look like rocks, but they don't. They're cars. <laughs> and they're, it's just, it's crazy, but it's, and it's free. So you pull up. And and it's and you know you walk around this this whole area and then they also have this 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 
great like kind of sculpture car art reserve place where other people have contributed sculptures that are made from cars or car parts and um, into all That's different kinds of shapes. And I, I just loved it. I spent quite a while there because I just was like, kind of, I just kind of, <laughs> I don't know, just like amazed, but kind of like, oh my God, what is this? And, and, <laughs> and it's like, and why, you know, and I guess it, you know, it is very bizarre and I guess it almost didn't quite, make it because the residents of the town of Alliance, where it's at, really thought it was just a, a real eyesore. And they were like, you know, take it down, take it down. And oh. um, they almost <laughs> did. But I guess they had a change of heart because people started coming to see this. And they realized, wow, this is a, this is an attraction for our town. So now it's the home of Carhenge for Alliance. And it's, you know, gotten all sorts of publicity and, and films and books and music and whatever. And a lot of people are making uh, kind of a beeline. If they're in the area, they're they're making that little detour to get there because it's just something that's just so Bizarre. strange. <laughs> Bizarre. I love stuff like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. the only just like what? Where was the these are those sculpture things that we saw? That oh, were recently? Old. Yeah. Oh yeah, we that, were um, we were out in it was Highway 395. I know you're going up through California later, but 395. It's you know pretty much a it's a beautiful highway. I call it like the sand to snow highway where you're going from the high desert outside Death Valley up. Uh, and the other side of the Sierras, the um, eastern side of the Sierras, and you got Death Valley, you got you know Yosemite and everything up there. And I, I there's Mono Lake um, with all the crazy formations, the tuftas that they tufta tuftas, I don't know what they're called, all like crazy volcanic things in the water. It's the inside of the front, uh, the inside of the CD, or I should say, album cover of um, Pink Floyd's. Ah, the dark side of the moon. Anyway, yes. so yeah. there. <laughs> I'm all tripped out about this, but there's also um, these crazy sculptures that this lady, she's like a steel sculpture, bronze <laughs> sculpture uh, lady, artist, and uh, they're like aliens. They look like aliens, but then they're not, and there's like, oh, oh my gosh, it's crabs, big giant kind of crab lobstery <laughs> things. And so, of course, we had to, you know, pull over and go drive down this dirt road and wondered Funny. if we were going to get in trouble. You know, it's the same thing as when you did the Great Sand Dunes. Did you see the UFO yep. Watchtower Garden? You know, yeah. <laughs> pull over for that stuff. And once you get out you there, have, you're like, someone you took time to. on this, <laughs> you know. You but have one, to. It's fascinating to see that stuff, you know. The, but the one sculpture is an alien eating a human. <laughs> And the oh alien's my. really big, and the man is really tiny. <laughs> Nancy wants it on the front cover of one of the magazines. She's dying oh, to be on the front I, cover. I really like it. It's really funny. I know. <laughs> I know. But it's so weird because you go from that, this car hinge thing, and then you've got this really deep natural history when you went to Agate Fossil Beds, a national monument, and then you've got, you know, and I have this thing about the um, – people following the trails, the pioneers and and people that did expeditions because you've got to think how difficult it was. Of course, there's Native American history first, right? They were there first. And then here comes right. everybody west. Um, all of it is not easy life back then. No, it's, it's um, you know, back when the pioneers did it in the mid-1800s, you know, they were heading out you know, heading to uh, into a land that they really didn't know anything about. And, um, you know, they were traveling, uh, you know, on the Oregon Trail, the California, the Mormon Trail, the Pony Express, and they mm. all used the same uh, route or the same passage. And they called it almost the Main Street of America because it was just the route to get mm. east to west. And, you know, so these landmarks, these geological landmarks became really important to them, I think. Um, it, it signaled certain things in terms of how far they were along the route. Mm. Um, and it, it kind of also gave them, it was a beacon, a point of reference. It gave them maybe encouragement um, that they knew they were like, you know, a third of the way there or whatever, you know, in terms of that. But um, so you have these national monuments that, um, 
uh, are kind of attributed to this type of um, uh, migration, which was um, the largest voluntary migration in the history of our country, which mm. I think is, is very important. And so, you know, you've got Chimney Rock uh, near Bayard, mm. and um, it's impossible to miss. Um, and it's, it's you know, I love the way that one pioneer said it was called, you know, they described it as towering to the heavens, you know, and uh, others called it Nose Mountain and the smokestack. <laughs> and, and they, you know, they used it as, like I said, a great point of reference, but it, you know, they could see it for miles, you know, going mm. up there. And so that, that one's interesting. And the other one that I thought was, was to me, really fascinating was Scott's Bluff near Gehring. And also another one of those that rose up from, um, you know, the ground and that was, you know, noticeable and, um, in name for that had a very interesting story about this fur trapper, fur trapper named Hiram Scott, who actually died right in the area. They say that the story has it that he was abandoned by uh, some comrades because maybe they think he was either ill or he was injured, and so his bones oh, were nice. found in that area. But there is this plaque up there on the top of the the bluff, um, you know, acknowledging an immemorial to him in the way that it was named, you know. So, um, and you can climb it, which I which I think was great. You can take this trail up to the top of the bluff, and along the way you can see the layers um, of the bluff. And then when you get to the top, you have these great this great view of the landscape. And for me, it was like, yeah, I imagine the pioneers coming across in their covered wagons on this you know, this this particular region and seeing this this bizarre, you know, geological formation formations and saying, Whoa, you know <laughs> what's that? What is this and, and all that kind it's of stuff. It's a diet but, muffin. <laughs> yeah. mm. <laughs> but it you is know. it's 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 fascinating and it preserves, you know, a thousand a couple several thousand acres of formations and you know, wow. to me, it's, you know, you re- you have this flat, very flat prairie landscape, and then, then the, you have these formations and, you know, limestone and sandstone and siltstone and, you know, everything has been weathered over time. And uh, so it's it's just, I don't know, to me, it, it, I, I really, I, I soaked up that kind of feeling of this is where the pioneers came. It's mm-hmm. like a moonscape, you know? Yes. Yeah, could, yeah, especially I could imagine at night if there's a full moon, it'd be kind of creepy. Out there. <laughs> I, I like that you know the Oregon Trail. We've been on parts of it in different places. Up the Pony Express Trail, we've done a lot of that this year up in the Nevada section, Northwest Nevada, or actually Nevada because we took Highway 50. And, um, and to me, the, the Pony Express thing is the stories of the different riders. Mm. You know, it's like the fur trappers. All these people, you start to like, wow, this is what it was like for them. And then there was like way back when those little dime novels that like, you know, Buffalo Bill was in, you know, that just made them all these big heroines, whether or not they did that. And you think about people like Kit Carson going across, you know. But you being in Santa Fe with the Santa Fe Trail, it's kind of all connected, you know. So it's kind of yes. interesting you know, with that part in the Oregon Trail, the Santa Fe Trail, and how these big roots were formed coming across. It's, it's, I, I think it's super neat. But I, I like the idea of thinking, like, what is this big butte? And they, did they know about buttes back then? Like, you know, just imagine being a little kid seeing something like that for the first time. That's got to be and, uh, and, mm, and whether or not they were like, um, you know, for example, you know, whether or not I, – before their trip or their head of their trip were they you know given you know some sort of map of some kind of thing where they told you know when you reach this point you'll know mm-hmm. that you've gone you know this amount of, of you know were they i wonder if they were some of them who were told that you know when others had gone ahead of them you know there's this big butte at this point in time or there's you know kind of bizarre mm-hmm. formation and this marks this and whether they had some sort of rough idea of of these trails you know i know the original people who went out first of course didn't because they were kind of trailblazing but i'm curious about all the others that followed them and the families and and i mean it wasn't just pioneers like you said it was you know people using pony express it was also outlaws it was you know there was a everybody was using these these uh you know routes to get to get from you know east to west and so i just wonder it'd be curious to know if how much they knew of what to expect, you know? Yeah. Mm. And that 
that's why I've got a big thing about the Lewis and Clark expedition, about what they were doing, you know, when you think about going across, you know, and they were still following other people's maps and things, you know, look at the Donner party. Talk about like, right. That's, yeah. you know, that's, that's mm. some craziness as well. Um, Nebraska too. That's something like, how did you end up there? Cause like how many people think of Nebraska all the time for tourism? And I, I think it's got to be fascinating because of the bird life, the um, native American culture, the history the you know, to me, I've kind of always had this thing about wanting to go there. You know, it 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 it's uh, it was one of two states left that I had to visit. I set a goal many years ago um, as a travel writer that I was going to visit every state in the United States, and um, it came down to yeah. that I had Nebraska and North Dakota left, and so it was okay. Well, we're going to plan this road trip, and we're going to you know, head up through Colorado and in through a section of Nebraska and then, you know, into the Dakotas up to North Dakota eventually. But cool. um, so it became, a, you know, part of, okay, how can we, how can I include Nebraska on this journey? And then it became, okay, instead of just driving through, which I don't consider visiting a state, I, I consider when you actually stop and stay and you see things instead of just mm-hmm. driving along a road. Um, for me, in my attempt to accomplish these goals, it was that I need to stop, stay, visit, see um, a portion of the state uh, in order for me to say that I've visited, quote unquote, this this state. You know, so sure. that's how it, it kind of it, it kind of grew from there. But um, like I said, I, I really didn't expect a lot and so i was i was really surprised and i think when you do take the, the road less traveled or or you go in an area that you you know is maybe quote unquote that you don't think is famous for something um and then you find all these you know kind of nuggets and hidden gems uh, like carhenge but um you know you 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 understand that oh in every little corner of this country there is something, whether it's historical, mm-hmm. geological, whether it's cultural, um, you know, wh- whatever it is, but you find these wonderful f- gems. And we were also fortunate that there was a museum uh, right near mm. Scott's Bluff, the Legacy, um, I think it was, the, what is it, the, the, the what is it? The legacy, the legacy you know, of the plains, plains, plains the legacy museum. of the plains museum. Yes, excuse me. And it was, um, thankfully, it was open. We were the only visitors, and um, it was fascinating with all the pioneer artifacts and this working farm. And so, you know, it it gave you more of a kind of a historical perspective and um, more about the people. And you know, like you were talking before, the kind of hardship and arduous life that they. Uh, were living at that time and to eke out a living on the land. So it was, um, it complemented the whole, the whole aspect of this whole pioneer migration and, and these, these landmarks. So that was, that was a treat because I did not expect uh, the museums to be open. Oh, and you got a lot of dinosaurs there. I don't think yes. dinosaurs like the mountains. <laughs> so they, they go to the plains. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's you know, there's also you know that the, this this Agate Fossil Beds National Monument, which um, cool. you know they say is one of the the, the top bone beds in this mm. great age of the mammals, and so you know they're they're they found these fossils and these bones from these creatures like these pig-like giant pig-like animals, and <laughs> they call it this gazelle camel, which I is like bizarre and a short hmm. rhino and a you know a beaver cool. of some kind and um awesome. the universities you know the the um archaeologists from several of the back east universities came out and um you know start started digging and in the early 1900s and found all these fossils and bones and it you know grew to be quite well known now of course i had no idea that it was there or that it was mm. well known or any of that. So that's, you know, another one of those unexpected, you know, detours that you're like, whoa, what's this? And yes. oh my gosh. Cool. <laughs> well, you cool. have the giant pig like animal. You know, I'll go right to that Seinfeld <laughs> episode when Kramer stole the pig out of that weird <laughs> science. I remember that. Place. 
<laughs> and whenever someone says something pig-like, I go right there. I can't help it. And how he's it's running out there with the pig, and it's squealing, and it's, it's not an <laughs> ass-man-ass pig, you know. But the pig thing, well, and, it, you know, to me, there is something about the plains. Even when we were in Colorado, yeah. those areas, and they seem to, the fossil um, fossil beds, fluorescent fossil yeah. beds, to me, it was interesting because you did have some mountains, but you had these plains, and there was just, it, it was a whole different thing when we went walking there. They had these thistle that were like ground thistle, mm. and they went out and wide, almost like artichokes, which I think they, they're all related, but yeah, like out and wide. And then just about every single thistle had a badger hole next to it. I'm like, come on, I want to see a badger, man. I do. Ooh. I really want to see a badger. But the prairies, that's why I think part of why Nebraska is such a big birding destination, too. Um, yes. It's the prairie lands and the prairies, mm-hmm. like all the bunting birds and the meadow larks. And I have a thing about prairies, and I didn't really realize it, but I really do want to play Little House on the Prairie. I do. <laughs> I do. I want, didn't you feel like Laura Ingalls Wilder when you were out there? Like, I did. I did. I really. And I, that was one of my favorite series as a as a mm. young girl, you know. And I always mm. thought, oh, how cool you know, to live in this kind of, you know, place and whatever. Of course, not realizing that, it, you know, is incredibly difficult to eke out a living. But um, I found the prairie, it, I found that it has it has a really unique beauty to it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people just think, oh, it's just boring, it's flat, mm-hmm. there's nothing to see. But you know what? It really, there's just, like I said, a real unique beauty to it uh to the landscape and if you look closer it it's teeming with wildlife and yes. in nebraska they're mm-hmm. known for those cranes that you know calm the migration of the cranes and mm. so that's you know birding is is one of their top um activities there but i encourage people if, if people have never been to the plains or really haven't given them a thought that you know it there's so much there and 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 you know, it's not boring um, and and repetitive or any of that. I think if you just you you look at it with a different perspective and you see see such um, interesting qualities to that prairie. Sure. And so I said the ones in Colorado that we went to, there were tiny, tiny little wildflowers everywhere. Yes. You yes. know, so mm-hmm. it's like you look and you go, oh, it's just a bunch of grass, but it isn't. No. And the no. antelope, there's antelope like pronghorn. Uh, we saw a pronghorn uh, when we were up in. Um, Greeley, mm-hmm. the Pawnee uh, grassland, if you get a chance to go there, the Pawnee National Grassland, it is, it's interesting because it's kind of a mix between the community, different communities. So you can drive and there will be like a graveyard and then you turn around and they're doing oil and gas. And then next, you know, here's the prairie and then you turn. It's, it's like an interesting thing how it goes all throughout this entire region of Weld County and you go out and you think about all these people that came out and homesteaded and dry farmed, dry farming, like way back when. And they're, they're known that they've got all kinds of cool rattlesnake things going on. Like they do. Yeah. Oh, yes. Big time in the prairies, but the birds and the antelope, like pronghorn will just be lying there. Totally yeah. camouflaged in the prairie grass, you mm-hmm. know, in the yeah. grassland. Or, so or you have, or you'll, neat. You'll happen to see, you know, as we're driving, we'll see one, you know, sprinting by, and you're mm-hmm. like, yeah. they're so great, they're graceful, and it's mm-hmm. just, they're very lithe, and it's just, um, so yeah, I think it's it's um, it's a surprise to uh, many travelers, but then once again, um, that's the beauty of a road trip as well, because you do get to see these things, because imagine you're flying over something, you don't get to see any of that, mm-hmm. and here you get Not to pull the aside the road, you get to, you know, you know, walk, you get to, to you know, look closely um, and get this, I don't know, up close and personal experience with the yeah. landscape. Mm-hmm. I have I've a thing about it, and going to the little towns and stuff like, on our way from Colorado here to Lubbock, we uh, stopped in a town called Happy. And, <laughs> but it's happy, and it has a happy bank, a happy center, and it's got <laughs> the old, old, old brick paved street. Like the actual streets are brick. A lot of derelict oh, buildings. I love that. But it, this mm. is happy, and it, it, was, it was interesting. There's the word, interesting, because it was like, are you a ghost town? Are you not? And then there's houses where you can see, like, people are taking care of it it was just a really i want to go and spend time there um but they have a happy bank and 
Isn't that, that's hysteric. I love that. You know what? And on the flip side to that is the town of hell in Michigan. Yeah, I know. I want and to do so that. If you go to hell yeah. in Michigan, you know, of course, everything is, you know, oriented to that, whether it's um, the t-shirts, you know, about uh, go to hell, come to hell. You know what I mean? It's like, it's in, in, they, they really, they, yeah, they have really uh, capitalized on that whole uh, situation, but it's hysterical. What you, why you think some, you know a, a town would be named Hell, or what you know, a town would be named Happy, or whatever it is. But it's like, Ooh. or the town in New Mexico of Truth or Consequences, named for a yeah. game yeah. show. You know what I mean? Yeah. So That's it's, it's why fascinating. Arizona? Why yes. Arizona? Yeah. I mean, it's in stone. <laughs> <Why? but> too. <laughs> we when we went to Weed, California, we stayed in this little old you know, motel thing. That was funny. And we, they had some <laughs> chamber of commerce thing, video thing playing about the town and their car show. And it was like a year old, honestly. And oh. <laughs> they were going, and the cars are going to roll into weed. And I'm like, that is like crazy <laughs> hysterical. Like all the, the verbiage. I mean, it's, it, you yep. know, that's like a copywriter's dream to have these yes. kind of towns just go to you know to go to town on you know it's like yeah you just you every reference you know would would be just weedified yep. or happyfied yep. or hellified you know it's like it's <laughs> you know it, but you know there's the great people people make you know a lot of um people uh you know make road trips to visit a quirky roadside attractions or mm. towns with you know, unique, strange uh, names or whatever it is. And, and you could make, you know, you could definitely plan road trips around those kinds of things. And it's just, to me, it's fascinating because there is a reason or, a, or, a, or maybe it dates to a historical situation, but for these colorful names or these, 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 these odd attractions. And, uh, you know, you, you don't know that until you actually, you go there, you visit, you understand, uh, or you talk to people and you get a background and to me that's that's the real i don't know the joy of of those kinds of road trips mm. i'm going to see the beef of the bar show <laughs> well you know it's, it's the way the, the country is so divided right now you know i think part of the the great american spirit is the road trip it really yes. is and i think this is the way for people to get over their prejudices because you're going to go in different communities where you are a guest in the community and you're going to see how America lives. You want to see how America is instead of watching Facebook and all the angry drama, get out on a road trip, obviously be careful, you know, uh, with, with this whole COVID thing, but um, use your mask, use that sanitizer, all of that good stuff. Um, but it, you will see how America lives. And it is different everywhere you go, mm-hmm. from small yeah. town to city. Um, but mm-hmm. we are in one country. And so I think this is part of the road trip is the true. When you think about America growing up outside of this country, a road trip was the epitome to me. Even though we traveled and did road trips, I never thought of it as a road trip until it's like American thing is road tripping. And um, I, I just think that that's the iconic way of life for America is to road trip and have these crazy adventures and go see the big ball of yarn or whatever it is. You yeah. know? Yes. <laughs> or the giant frying pan. Yeah, yes. yes. I yeah, want or that. Car, he- car henge or, you know, yeah, that's crazy. The, the, giant pen- the giant pencil in, you know, yeah. Cleveland or the whatever it is. It's like, in Las Cruces, yeah, it's New it's, Mexico. It just, um, and you're right. I think um, it opens your eyes to, um, America and mm-hmm. to the fact that we are this one big country, but we have such, you know, just such interesting places to visit in our mm-hmm. own country. Um, mm-hmm. I, I love, don't get me wrong. I love traveling around the world. Um, yeah. It also is incredible eye opener and so fascinating culturally wise and uh, everything wise. But I also, you know, I know of people who only travel, they only want to travel outside the country and they don't think mm-hmm. about their own country, except for maybe a couple of places that are, you know, so well known. But it's to me, it's like, whoa, you know, wait a second. Think about, you know, we have so much. We have a lot of different cultures yeah, in big, our country. Yeah, big country. 
and it's it's you know you go to the south you go to new england you go to the southwest you go to the middle you know the midwest mm. you go to the plains you go to the mountains you go to the coast wherever it is it, it you know it's it's like going to a totally different uh, country mm-hmm. in many ways you know and it to me it's fascinating it's like you know you don't People, you don't need to hop on a plane and travel. And right now, that's you know obviously, uh, you know a challenge and a difficult situation. And uh, right now, you know, with with we as Americans can't go uh, to places uh, because of you know the situation with the virus. So it's to me, I think people are. This is the rediscovering of the road trip summer for so many people that hadn't thought about that. Yeah, yeah, and I station, agree. station wagon sales are going up, <laughs> <laughs> as well as camp, campers and RVs are yeah. going like hotcakes yeah. and crazy. You know, I know, I know. I it's, hit, it's, 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 I, I want, yeah, and and Chevy Chase movies are going up. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's now so, I want to so hear true. the song "America" by uh, Simon and Garfunkel. It's like one of my favorite songs. They all oh, I love that song. For America. Yeah, and now I was like thinking mm-hmm. about that. It's like, it's interesting because we have friends overseas that are that travel here all the time, and they're like, "Oh, I forgot about this in our own country," you know, and and so they're having that same experience um, of just rediscovering their country. And I just I don't think there's anything wrong with finding out about our roots even further because our roots are culturally, I mean, we are a melting pot in this country and there's different cultures and foods and everything. So you can go around the world within this country for sure. You really can. Absolutely. Just on and food fact, alone. And the fact that, you know, we are all, you know, our history, we are tied to the land. You know what I mean? We are, mm-hmm. it, it, that is our roots. And um, the, the land is so diverse uh, that yeah. it is, it, it it is like going around the world when you see mm-hmm. you know you see alpine areas and you see prairie and you see coastal areas and it's just I, it it is understanding that our roots are tied to the land and mm, you know yeah. that to me when you take a road trip that becomes extremely clear mm, very yeah. exciting. Mm-hmm. I know, and now we so next time we chat with you, I know we're going to be recording a segment on South Dakota. Um, Nancy and I North, would have been North to hot, oh, North, North, North Dakota. Dakota. Right. Oh, right. cool, cool. Um, we would have been to Hot Springs uh, National Park in Arkansas. We would have been in Natchitoches, Louisiana, and Tyler, Texas, and we'll be chatting to you when we've just arrived in Tampa, Florida. So this is going to be fun. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> that's a good road trip, I think, you know. I think um, so, too. I agree. And then you go off to the coast, too. We all get to go to the coast, and Nancy and I can't wait. We haven't seen a beach in over six, seven years, which is... Oh, my gosh. Truly? I'm freaking out. I'm yeah, freaking it's been a out. long time. Well, we've done a lot of desert, Colorado. We've done a lot of, you know, all of that kind of country. You know, we've done a lot, but not... I mean, we were in Kentucky last year. We, I mean, we were in Arkansas. Right. Louisiana, but we didn't get to the coast. Everything was land, you know, centric. So now just to, to see the ocean, I'm going right. to literally freak out. <laughs> you're going to hear yeah, me. I, think, I know you're going to Oregon. You're going to hear us all the way from yep. Florida to Oregon go, oh, that's a beach. <laughs> Seriously. I think, yeah, I have to, I have to, uh, I have to get to the coast uh, sometimes a couple times a year. It's like, you know, being in landlocked New Mexico, Mm -hmm. um, you know, yes, you've got some rivers and, uh, you know, a few lakes or, you know, you can go up to Colorado and see beautiful mountain lakes and glacier fed areas and gorgeous rivers. But there's something about the coast and the ocean that is Mm -hmm. so special. And I cannot wait to walk on the beach every morning and go to sleep oh. at night listening to the ocean. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's for it's sure. Be yeah. magic. I can't wait to hear all about that. Well, Debbie, uh, we always love to play music for you. And this song is dedicated to Carhenge and to the fire monkey, <laughs> Debbie, the fire monkey, uh, going to Carhenge. You know, the fire monkey may jump on top of Carhenge. It's just like a little monkey on the cars. But um, everyone, again, uh, before we get to the music, uh, Debbie's story is up on nationalparktraveling.com. You'll be able to see it there. And also, uh, it is also going to be in the fall issue of Parks and Travel magazine. But this song is called Ford F-150. Um, yeah, Ford <laughs> F-150. I love it. It's from, 
I know. It's a guitar song. It's from uh, guitarist uh, Misha Shellhoff, and uh, you can go keep up with him at MishaMusic.com. It's off of his latest album called Double Take. Uh, so here it is, a Ford F-150. Well, until next time, Fire Monkey, you take care. You too, ladies. Sir, travel safe. Yeah. You, you too. too. Thanks. Here it is, everyone. Rev those engines.